from midnight, and I don't have my PowerPoint up tonight, the computer having a little difficulty. Amen, but we do know our main scripture was coming out of Matthew chapter 25. So if you flip there, so out of the book of Matthew, and that was chapter 25. That was our main scripture we started on in last on last week. And tonight we're gonna focus on a topic. Last week we talked on slowfulness. And tonight, out of the same passage of scripture, we're going to focus on the topic, uh, empty vessels. We're going to talk about empty vessels. And so tonight, we won't read the full uh, passage. We'll just do a few verses out of there. And we'll start at verse 6. We'll just do verses 6 through 13. All right, so if you have it, just say amen to me. That's Matthew chapter 25. And we'll begin at verse 6 tonight. And we're going to be talking on empty vessels. All right. And when you get there, just say amen to me. All right. Everyone have it. Okay. So verse 6, it says, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. They got ready to go out to meet the bridegroom. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. So that means they had and ran out of the oil. They already had some oil in the lamps that they had, but that oil had ran out. It says, but the wise answer, saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. So they're saying, we only have enough to sustain, sustain ourselves. We don't have any to share. It says, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Verse 11, Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. These are those that had to go back into town and get the oil that they needed. Verse 12, it says, But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. And so tonight we just focus on verse 8. The foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. All right, so when looking at this, you had those we said last week, the five foolish, they fell to pack up enough oil to carry with them to go out and meet the bridegroom when he came, when he called for them. And so if you apply this to us, you flip it spiritually, so this was a parable that Jesus was giving. He was talking with his disciples, a different one. But you flip it to us, you think about how many times, I said last week, you come into church, but do you really take in that word that's being preached? Or do you really take in the word that's being taught? All right, so right here, they, they ran to them, and they say, well, we need what y'all have because we done went empty. And I began to think about it. You know, sometimes people, even when it comes to uh, praying, they'll run to somebody else, I need you to pray for me. They won't pray for themselves. They say, I need you to stand in the gap. I know you can touch the Lord. It's so in you that I know you can touch heaven. And so you think about that evidently when you have those, when you have those thoughts, you, you must feel like there's something that you're lacking. You're empty. All right, so empty vessels, when you look at this, they had no oil. So you apply it to us. We, if you're not, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you're really walking in dangerous territory, especially in today's time. All the things that we face, that we go through, you understand that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. 
is principalities, evil, spiritual wickedness, and high places. That's what the Bible says. And so when, when these, they had to have the oil. The oil was first meant to be in the lamp, to keep the lamp lit up, to keep it able to give off light. And so you also think about that. You think about us, we dwell in dark times. We dwell in the midst of much wickedness, much evil. And so if the Holy Ghost, if the light is not in us, when you go out in the midst of those who are sinners, there's no way that they'll be able to see. The virgins, they use those lamps to get them to the bridegroom. And the oil had to be in there. The oil had to be in the lamps. So you think about us, in order to meet Jesus, to get to where he is, the Holy Ghost has to be in us. And so if you flip to flip to John chapter 3, John chapter 3, you know, it's something, you don't want to go all this time of coming to church, coming to Bible study, you're praying, you're reading, you're fasting, and at the end of the day, you stand before the Lord, and you're really empty. That's what he told them. They ran to get oil, came back, and he said, but I don't know you. So you think about that. You think about what all we actually do, the work, the effort that we actually put in, the work for the Lord, to get closer to the Lord. But you got to be sure that the Holy Ghost is really in you. All right, so in John chapter 3, and I said without the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, that's what's going to get us. That's what gets us into the kingdom of God. Without the Holy Ghost, you have some people now, and that's what they're being taught. They don't know. They just think that, well, I'm saved. I confess Christ as my Savior. That's it. So I'm, I'm going to get in the gate. All right, so John chapter 3, and we'll read verse 5 and 6, and just say amen to me when you get there. All right, everyone have it. All right, so this is familiar with to us. This is Nicodemus, and he's talking to Jesus. All right, so verse 5, that's St. John chapter 3, and we're going to do just verses 5 and 6. It say, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man be born of water and of the Spirit, from the Spirit of Christ or the Holy Ghost, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So right there, Jesus was telling him, you got to have there's got to be the Holy Ghost has to come in and abide in you in order for you to get to where I am. That's what he's telling us. All right. And so if you flip over to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 with me. Before I read that, I'll ask you this question. What would you say is the danger in being spiritually empty? If I was to ask you that, what's the danger and being spiritually empty. In your own words, what would you tell me the danger in that is? So we never said not being able to hear from God. All right, right y'all can talk to me. <laughs> What's the danger of being spiritually empty? You know, there's a scripture that says you have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Not good enough to just look the part, but the power, the Holy Ghost, really has to be in you. So what's the danger in it not being in you? But just to be like the tree that Jesus cursed. Mm -hmm. Because hell said won't be able to stand. Won't have, no right. have no power to live right. Mm -hmm. Not right, anybody else? So the one thing you be tossed to and fro. You can go ahead. You can go ahead, Sister Miracle. Mm -hmm. End up self righteous, not really making it into the kingdom. And that's the state that we do not want to find ourselves in. All right, so we said 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 
and we'll read verse 7. All right, everyone have it. All right, so 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. And this is Paul. He said, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Now the virgin, and I had a picture that I was going to show you to give you a visual. They had these, back in those days, the vessels that they used were like pots, but they were made of clay. And that's what they used to carry the oil to keep the lamp burning. So whenever the they would fill the lamp up so much, and then whatever they had extra, or what was the remaining part, that's what they carried it in. All right, but he says, this treasure that we have is in earthen vessels, in us. All right, he says that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. All right, so this is the importance of truly having the spirit of Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, on the inside of us. Even you think about how you have, there's many different voices, many different, much deception that's in the land. And so if you don't really have the Holy Ghost inside of you, you'll be in, like I said earlier, in that same state of mind where people think, well, okay, I believe in Jesus, so I'm good. They don't think that they have to go on and actually live holy. They feel like, well, I believe in Jesus, I believe Jesus is real, but I can still drink, I can still smoke, I can still cuss, I can still party, nothing changes. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's the danger, because at the end of the day, you're going to lose your soul. Mm -hmm. All right, so not having, being empty can cost you your seat in the kingdom. You're not going to make it in. All right, and then if you will, flip over into the, we'll read the, in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 19. And this will just give us a little example of the danger of not having the Holy Ghost, basically. Acts chapter 19. We don't want to find ourselves in a state where they said, well, y'all got to give us what y'all have. By that time, the bride crew was ready to meet them. It was too late. So, you know, we, we're supposed to make preparation now. When you look at it, the parable, those wise ones, they were, they were prepared, and the foolish was not. All right, we don't want to be unprepared when Jesus comes back for us. All right, so Acts chapter 19, Acts 19, and we'll read verses 11 through 17. All right, so Acts chapter 19, verses 11 through 17, and when you have it, just say amen to me. All right. It says, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. And this is because Paul had the power of God working in him. Verse 13, it says, Then certain of the vagabond Jews who were exorcists, also you could call them witch doctors. You think about the exorcists are people who they feel like they can uh, conjure demons out of people. So this is what they were doing. And it says, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. So they see that the Lord is using Paul, and they feel like, okay, well, we can jump up and go do the same thing, because we've been practicing this. All right, so verse 14, it says, And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them. They had nothing working in them. They were empty vessels. All right, it says, and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews 
and grief, also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. All right, and I thought about this, and I could you, I thought about how I've seen, um, I've heard a lot about how people, they've had to pray for people who are, um, who were possessed. And now you think about this situation, can you imagine you going to attack a demon? Now, they, these people, they said, well, we just going to say by the name, the same Jesus that Paul said. The same thing going to happen. But now you going to confront the devil, and you have no power in you. Now, he looks at them, and he tells them, we know Jesus, we know Paul, but we don't know you. And he tells the, the spirit is talking to them now. And the, the spirit looks at them and can see that they have nothing in the inside. All right, and that is not how we want to be, especially in this hour. We don't want to go and you confront the devil, and the devil beat you and you run and tuck tail. All right, it's supposed to be the other way around. All right, when he see us, when he, the, that spirit, they notice, they recognize the power that Paul was working in. It wasn't in a fleshly power. It was the power of God. All right, that is, we don't want to be those who think that we got something. You're going to go up there and you're going to tell the devil, Get out of here, Satan. And he look at you and he tell you, well, you get out of here. And you end up the one running. All right, we don't want to be empty vessels in this hour because we're facing principalities that we have not seen before. All right, and we are, the Lord is trying to get us prepared. And but he's trying to get us ready because we, we facing some, we're going to face some stuff. And the Lord is giving us opportunity to get really rooted and grounded. Not just scratching the surface, but really built rooted and grounded in him. All right? And so that's all I do have. Any comments or questions on tonight? All right, well, if not, we get ready to take up our offering. 